Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Stan Howe. The West Virginia Library Association was established over 100 years ago in 1914 to promote library service and librarianship in the Mountain State. At the time, there were only a handful of public libraries in West Virginia, and those were centered in the state's larger cities. Rural counties generally had no libraries and no library service at all. Since then, the WVLA has worked to develop and expand library services of all types. WVLA advocates for library issues, distributes public information, develops continuing education opportunities, and works closely with the West Virginia Library Commission. The WVLA is governed by an elected executive board that meets four times a year to conduct association business, and it sponsors two major library meetings during the year, the annual Spring Fling and its Fall Annual Conference. Today we're going to pay a visit to this year's Spring Fling to take a closer look at the WVLA, what it does, how it operates, and what it means to libraries all across West Virginia. Let's head to Summersville and find out what's going on. Welcome to this year's WVLA Spring Fling, where librarians across the state gather to learn about new programs and techniques, share ideas, and spend a little time with others who share their passion for books and learning. With me now is WVLA President Gretchen Beach and WVLA Marketing Chair Megan Tarbett. Ladies, thanks for being with us. Hi, Stan. Thank you. Well, let's talk a little bit about the WVLA and its role in this focus. Basically, what does the WVLA do? Um, the association is here to support and promote libraries across the state of West Virginia. And it's not just public libraries, we're talking uh, uh, school libraries, public libraries. What about academic special libraries? Uh, both included. So we, we represent all libraries. Sounds like a pretty big job. So uh, how do you support them? What are some of the programs that the WVLA uh, sponsors uh, to get these libraries where you want them to be? Well, we do both the Spring Fling and also an annual conference. Um, this brings in people from across the nation uh, to be able to get some learning and education credits for the libraries. What's the difference between the Spring Fling and the Fall Conference? I, I know there's <laughs> some differences, but basically, uh, why, how are they different? Spring Fling is more uh, based towards public libraries and the children's libraries. Uh, tomorrow at Spring Flink, they'll be having children's programming that they'll use during the summer uh, for their summer reading program. Fall Conference really covers everybody. Megan, why don't you tell me about some of the services and programs that the WVLA provides? Sure. Um, the, the conferences are like the major, ve the major vehicle for continuing education um, for the librarians around the state. Um, you know, the, the Library Commission does a great job of telling people about webinars and things like that, but the conferences really are the best place to meet up with your peers, talk about what's going on in your libraries. You just, you feel less alone when you can get together with people who are going through the same experiences. So WVLA brings, you know, the librarians and, and library staff around the state together a couple times a year. Um, and we also, um, our job is to plan like the library day at the legislature and we do that every year. Um, you know, it's a, it's a visibility day. Um, you know, we go en masse uh, to the legislature, talk to our legislators, tell them what's going on uh, in libraries and, and why they should continue to support us as they have in the past. You mentioned the, uh, the legislature, particularly this year, it seems that the uh, libraries are come under a lot of scrutiny from the legislature, funding for libraries. What's the WVLA's role in all of that? Well, WVLA um, kind of spearheads um, kind of the, the message that we give to the legislators. Um, there is a legislative committee, and they come up with uh, our, our wants uh, for the legislature, uh, for the legislative session. Um, you know, we've been trying for years to get a dedicated fund. It doesn't need, necessarily need to be funded. It just needs to have a line in the budget for capital projects. You know, if there is any extra money anywhere, it would, that would be a vehicle for them to put that money in so that we could distribute it um, for uh, capital projects. Um, we, every year we try to get um, 
kind of the rule about the levies changed. Um, right now, uh, boards of education only need a 51% uh, victory to, to pass. Libraries have to have a 60%. Mm. And so, you know, levies have failed at 59%. Um, you know, the majority of the people in a, in a county want it, but, you know, because it has to get that uh, extra majority, um, it's, it's failed. So, you know, we've pushed for that for the last few years. Um, and the legislatures, of course, they, the legislatures, they listen and they want to support us. Those just, those priorities haven't happened yet. But, you know, WVLA gives all the librarians that list and when they talk to their legislators, those are the message points that they're able to give. So uh, WVLA plans that every year, uh, plans that message. We also follow along with the federal and with the American Library Association, and that's been critical this year because um, currently the federal budget has wiped out uh, all of the LSTA money and our funding for libraries that we get from the federal government. So we've been sending information to the libraries and having them call the representatives to try to make sure that gets added back in at the final federal budget. Gretchen, tell us a little bit about the organization and structure of the WVLA? Uh, well, we have a president and president-elect. Um, we have our executive board that includes um, membership, vice president, and then a past president is also on there. Uh, we have division chairs, the public library, academic, uh, school library chairs. Um, our board is, is volunteer. Um, we have recently hired a part-time executive director, you know, as we kind of solidify what we need to do and to grow the organization. But for the most part, for our 100 plus year history, um, it has been a volunteer run board, usually from, you know, librarians and staff members throughout the state who are already carrying a full load at their own library. So it, it is an act of love um, to, to, to work for WVLA. Megan, you're the marketing chair. Describe your role to, to us. Well, a lot of it is, you know, merchandise. Uh, I'm here at the conference with our, uh, our table of goodies, um, but it's also um, outreach. You know, not only do I go to book festivals throughout the state, not just to sell things, which the money goes back in to support uh, our mission, but it's also to get the word out there. Most people stop by the table and say, what is WVLA? It's the West Virginia Library Association. So, you know, we, we have our website on a card that they can go find out more about our organization. So, you know, it's not just... Um, materials, it is information, and also the, the marketing committee works closely with the, with the PR committee, the public re relations committee, um, to keep our social media feed uh, active and interesting. Uh, not only do we share information from what's going on around the state, but also kind of those federal calls to action. Sometimes it's a funny meme. Uh, you know, it's just kind of things to keep people engaged um, kind of in what we're doing. The WBLA is over 100 years old, Gretchen. Mm -hmm. it been around for a while. Where do you see the future of libraries in the WVLA going? I think we're going to be needed even more. Um, as funding continues, um, if things don't get better financially in the state and with the federal government, um, public libraries are always going to be needed. And um, we're just going to need to be able to be here to promote and to support the libraries even more as the years go on. Gretchen, Megan, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back after this. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Back to libraries today, where we're learning about the West Virginia Library Association here at the WVLA annual Spring Fling. 
here in Somersville. There are 172 public libraries in the state, and the WVLA provides invaluable services to those libraries. But there are nearly a thousand schools in West Virginia, and the WVLA works closely with the libraries in those schools as well. With me now to explain how the WVLA works with libraries and schools is WVLA School Library Division Chair, Susie Martin. Susie, thanks for being with us. Thank you. You know, we have uh, tend to concentrate here at the WVLC on public libraries. Yes. But there are a lot of school libraries in this state. There are. What does the WVLA, uh, how does the WVLA work with the school libraries? WVLA makes every effort to reach out to the school libraries. Um, but frankly, we don't have a very active school library membership in WVLA. And I think that the main reason for that is an economic one. All school librarians are teachers first. Mm -hmm. And as teachers, it is wise to join either WVEA or AFT. And when you do that and you shell out $500 a year for that more or less protection, you kind of question whether you want to spend that extra $60 for WVLA membership. There's also the impression that this is a public library organization mm -hmm. and not directly impacting the school so much. And I'm working very hard to try to change that idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one of the things um, that I've, since I've been the chair, is I've started the Facebook group. I have a Yammer group. We have a school library listserv. Mm -hmm. And I try to keep everybody, all school librarians in the state, involved in knowing what WVLA is doing. You know, there are a lot of schools in the state but not all the schools have school libraries. That's true. As a matter of fact, there are seven counties at this moment that have no school librarians or libraries. They may have libraries, but they have no school librarians whatsoever. And that leaves something like 14,000 children without any school librarian services. A big issue um, that I see with that is that there's nobody to teach information literacy skills you know, now fake news is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Fake news has always been a big deal. It just right. hasn't been quite as much in the forefront. We teach valuable literacy skills of teaching children how to tear apart information, how to validate information. And a lot of children are not getting that opportunity. A lot of children do not know of the wonderful databases that the state makes available to them, simply because there's nobody to share that information. Can, how, does the public, how do public libraries fill in those gaps? Public librarians are anxious to do anything that they can to help the schools. Um, and in places where there are school librarians, sometimes that's perceived as a threat. It's not a threat. But because school librarians are always viewed sometimes as, well, viewed sometimes as on the fringe, a non-essential, they're afraid that any time somebody would, a funding body might say, well look, the public library will do that for us. Why do we need you? Well, the answer for that is because we're teachers first. And we have to teach the valuable skills to the students that they will need to compete for jobs, to compete in college. Can you imagine how hard it is for a child in a county that has no school libraries to go to WVU and be expected to do a term paper? I mean, they don't have the skills. And the classroom teachers may not have the skills to bring them up to where they need to be. I know my experience as a student I spend a lot of time in the school libraries, right? And I, I personally can't imagine going through school and not have a library to go to. Yeah, that's got to be tough. I would think it would be horribly tough. And the bad news is, a lot of people don't even know what they're missing. They don't know that about things about the different types of resources that are available. How to go about putting together information so that you show multiple points of view, mm -hmm. actually recognizing a biased point of view or something that's out and out fake. Um, it's, it's an issue. I, I've even seen it in some graduate classes that I've taught mm -hmm. where some of my students will be very savvy and others, even as adults, have lacked these skills coming up. You can really see a big gap. My daughter is a school teacher and she is, teaches in a, in a new school uh -huh. with, uh, it, it set up to be a new style school. Uh -huh. And she teaches fifth grade, and the school does not have a library. There are books in each 
area for kids to check out, but not a librarian to help them understand how everything works. And I think that's, a, I guess, a growing trend. I'm, you know, I'm afraid that it will be coming more of a trend. Um, I also question, I mean, of course, the main focus of our job is not to be the, the bookkeeper, the gatekeeper. The main purpose is to let things go out and, you know, it's an operating risk whether or not things come back. Mm -hmm. But the point is, when you have a centralized system, you have the management to track it. Whereas in the individual sections, it might not be as automated or as efficient in actually getting things back or actually checking them out. I mean, and that's a small part of it. The American Library Association, or School Libraries Division, or well, the American Association of School Librarians, identifies five roles for school library media specialists. We're called school librarians now. Some people mm -hmm. call us media specialists. Mm -hmm. um, but the first role is as a leader. We're supposed to be helping develop curriculum, providing training to the teachers that might need it, as well as to the students. So we should be not above the teachers, but we should be a colleague trying to help them learn new things. The second role is an instructional support specialist, providing resources to the teachers that they need to teach their classes. The third role would be an information technologist managing a virtual presence. The fourth role is actually teaching the children. The fifth role is the role everybody thinks we have, which is actually running the library. <laughs> and that is what ALA has, or AASL has noted of our five roles, that's the one they know is the least important for a professional librarian. That's interesting. It is interesting. And you're probably one of five people now in West Virginia that <laughs> know that. It, and for those schools that do have school librarians, mm -hmm. uh, is there some continuing education programs that the WVLA provides? Yes, we do a summer refresher course, and I'm really excited about this year's. We have um, the uh, past, past president from the American Association for School Librarians coming in, and our theme this year is Climb Higher through Collaboration, Leadership, Innovation, and Marketing, because we don't tell our story well. We're isolated pockets. In our counties, um, there often isn't a person who knows enough about what we're supposed to be doing to provide the professional development for us. And we're quite, as a body, used to having things done for us and told what we're supposed to do, rather than being the leaders and going out and doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I retired in December. I'm still the school library chair. <laughs> and I would really like to see other younger, or even my age librarians, come up and assume the leadership roles and, and learn you know, what the best practices are from the school, American Association of School Librarians and be able to provide that in service. Um, I think that there's a lot of opportunities available to us that we're not aware of and a lot of practices that we just, and, and everything varies from school to school. And even in the county I was in, Monongalia, I run a different program than maybe a, the librarian at another school does, depending on what the needs of that school are. So really we have no standardization of what we do from school to school, even within the same county. And while you, know, you can't have variations, we ought to have the same standard practices. You've touched on several challenges yes. that school librarians face. Yeah. What would you consider the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge, I think, to school libraries right now, setting aside lack of funding. I mean, funding varies from county to county. There are several counties that do a great job of funding both the positions and the resources. Montgomery County is one of those counties. But then there are some counties that have librarians but have no school library budget. I mean, we'll have your bake sale. <laughs> and then there are some people that will provide the resources but will provide the librarian. So there's a real disconnect about what's expected from county to county, from school to school. But I think the biggest challenge to school libraries as a profession right now is the fact that the state has allowed to, license, to become a school librarian, all you have to do is, is be a teacher, a licensed teacher, and pass the praxis exam, which means that you could go out with a, if you had a school teaching degree, or your daughter could, pass the praxis and become a school librarian with no training in libraries whatsoever. And there are systems. <laughs> These are important things. <laughs> and I, I, I see that as a huge challenge. I mean, you do have to study up on some foundational materials to pass the praxis, 
but you don't have a, a feel for the give and take of the whole organ of the whole structure of how libraries should be run. You, we can learn a lot from the new teachers coming in as the librarians, but I think there's a lot that maybe they need to learn from us. And I'm hoping that this conference touches on it. I want to invite everybody who's certified as a school library media specialist, whether they have a job as a school library media specialist or not, I hope they'll come to Morgantown in July. Susie, you're obviously very passionate yeah. <laughs> about this. Uh, looking back on your career as a school librarian, uh, what was the most rewarding aspect of your job? I think it was developing the relationships with the families. I, um, you know, I would hold open library nights you know, on my own after several days, several nights a month. And parents would be invited to come in and, and work with their children and find materials. And I could show them some of the materials the students were using. And just for years and years, like when the children get to fifth grade and, I, and I've had three of their older siblings, I didn't lose that child. I lost the whole family. And that, that's, a, that's a big deal. Um, well, I saw one of my former parents from Morgantown sitting at a table, and she and I looked at each other and said, I thought that was you, and she ran off her son's senior picture for me, you know, and, you know, we still keep those connections. It's Susie, wonderful. we appreciate it, and, and good luck with, with all your efforts to get school librarians where you think they need to be. I think they need to be everywhere, <laughs> and I will work on that. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Along with school libraries, the WVLA is also heavily involved with the state's 172 public libraries. Joining us now is WVLA Public Libraries Division Chair, Sarah Mitchell. Sarah, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So explain for me the role the WVLA plays with public libraries. WVLA is an organization that helps bring libraries together throughout the state, and it helps combine and teach us through continuing education and provides different avenues for us to network, learn more, and just work together as a team and make libraries a better place for the community. You know, we've been talking a little bit about school libraries. Um, and the public libraries are really a different kind of entity. So how does the WVLA approach things differently when we're talking about public libraries? WVLA approaches public library is more as a community of us working together and including schools in that community. We try to take the different avenues of each li library and approach it in the best way possible. Li public libraries are more for the whole community. They're more for every single person, you, me, and everyone. And they can all go to the library just to learn and find a bunch of different resources. I guess the challenges, challenges for a school library compared to a public library, I think, would be very different. Uh, what kind of challenges do you face in the public library? I think just getting our message out there. We want people to realize that we're there and we can help them in anything. We can help them with homework for the school kids that come home from school. We can help an adult with a resume. We can help a teacher find some books for their teacher collections. We can help just wanting entertainment. We have DVDs, we have movies, we have different online resources. The library is more than just books. And I think our challenge is getting the message out there so people know they can come out to us. You mentioned continuing education. So uh, obviously very important for librarians. How does the WVLA help continuing education for libraries? It holds different conferences. For example, we have two conferences each year. We have a fall conference and a spring conference. At the spring conference, we have multiple different sessions on multiple different topics to help educate our librarians on different things going on around the state and also to provide a networking environment so we can all communicate and work together. Are there scholarships available? There are. We have a scholarship fund that is available for anyone that is interested that's a librarian that wants to come. All they have to do is apply. And uh, so how are they, uh, how do these scholarships work? The scholarship is actually um, raised by WVLA and different fundraising avenues within WVLA to provide people with continuing education. Like there's usually 50-50 drawings and things like that at the different conferences to encourage people to donate money to the scholarship fund. You know, when I was a kid, libraries were about books. You know, that, that's what they were about. They sure have changed over the last several decades. When you look at libraries today, how have they changed 
over the past several years. Where do you see them going in the future? I say libraries are more now a community center. We're more now a center point in the community for people to get resources, and we're also a great equalizer. Not everyone has access to the internet. Not everyone has access to books. Not everyone has access to movies, and that's something we provide them to. We allow anyone and anybody to come and use the library. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. The West Virginia Library Commission encourages lifelong learning, individual empowerment, civic engagement, and an enriched quality of life by enhancing library and information services for all West Virginians. For questions or comments regarding topics on this show, please do not hesitate to call us at 1-800-642-9021 or visit us online at www.librarycommission.wv.gov. To keep you updated on library happenings in the state and beyond, the West Virginia Library Commission uses the WVLC website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the Library Lookout newsletter. If you haven't liked us or followed us on social media yet, please do. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Since it was founded prior to the start of World War I, the West Virginia Library Association has offered leadership and a helping hand in providing and improving library service in West Virginia. It recognizes outstanding achievement in librarianship and literature. It encourages the development of new libraries and improves the education opportunities for all of the state's librarians. It's a big job. And for over 100 years, the WVLA has done it very well. I'd like to thank our guest today from the WVLA, Association President Gretchen Beach, School Library Division Chair, Susie Martin, Public Librarians Division Chair, Sarah Mitchell, and Public Information Officer, Megan Tarbett. Thanks to each of you for providing your insight into the workings of the West Virginia Library Association. I'm your host, Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today.